It is November 27th, 2017, and I'm going to show you my rocket stove. This is the design. Uh, it is 5x5 five five square tubing. This is the feed tube. This is the burn chamber. This is the riser. This is a clean out. And here it is in operation. That is a retired 40 gallon electric hot water tank. And, the, and it is bolted to a piece of eighth inch diamond plate. And the burn chamber, as you can see, comes in the bottom. And it goes to the midpoint of the tank and then goes vertical up to within about an inch and a half of the top of the hot water tank. And then, of course, your gases have to come back down the sides and exit out through the chimney. And that chimney goes up to tw about 26 feet high altogether when it exits. I do have a little heat reclaimer in the uh, exhaust here that picks up some heat. Uh, got a electric fan that blows the air down. And uh, after, um, for years, I used a burn barrel. I had a, a burn barrel in here that I had worked on to make it as efficient as I could, I uh, built a, a small combustion chamber inside the burn barrel. I had a, a metal plate on top and I was trying to reburn the wood gas and I was somewhat successful. Uh, this building took one full cord of wood a month to, to keep the building warm. I'm sorry, one face cord of wood a month to keep the building warm. Uh, so I was burning about four, four and a half face cord, a heating season of traditional 16 inch long split cordwood. When I put the rocket stove in, I took that same cordwood and I split it up into little pieces so that I could feed it into this burn tube. And instantly I knew I was onto something because I literally burned one third of the amount of wood with the rocket stove as I, as I did with the burn barrel. And the reason for that, I believe, is it burns all the gases. It burns, this combustion chamber is instantly seven, 800 degrees in the morning, right in here. And if I take my metal probe, I got a, a metal wire probe here. If I go down into that, into that, into that flame, if I go down into this flame here, in about a minute or so, the end of this thing will be orange. And that, according to the heat scale, is about 1600 degrees. Now, it probably wouldn't do it right now because it's idling, it's down low, but it, it, I'm talking when it's running hard. She's glowing red, she'll be glowing orange in about a minute. It takes longer now, because it's, it's only idling right now. But uh, anyway, it, it uh, like I say, it was a, a challenge though because I had to cut up all the, the wood into small pieces. So I said, well, let's see if we can figure out a way to burn wood pellets. And uh, that's what I'm doing now and have been for three years. Uh, I forgot the cord wood. I just buy pellets and cherry pits. And you can see down in there, I made up a, a basket, a burn basket out of some angle iron and uh, welded it together and drill a, drilled a series of 3 8 holes through both sides. Um, if you look down through here, you can see the 3 8 holes. I cleaned one side just a few minutes ago with that rod to let the ash out so we get a little bit more heat. But the same series of holes is on the right, is on the left. They're, they're, they're identical. Now in the morning, when I first start this, those holes are all clean. I take this vacuum right here and I suck that, I suck that burner out. It takes me about 30 seconds to clean that burner from on top. I take that and stick that down in there. And then I take this prepared 15 ounce can. It's a combination of cherry pits and wood pellets soaked with a little bit of oil. I got a little squirt bottle down there. I just soak that, I just spray a little in there and it sits overnight. And in the morning, I take and dump that down. I have this, this burner tube right out of here. This just pulls out. And then I dump that mixture down in there. And then I take 
one of these lighter blocks. I just break off a piece of this lighter block here and I set that right in there and then I light it with my torch and put my little I got a little shield on here then you got to cover this up I got that rag there that I put over top of this so you don't get any airflow down through your burn basket and in about 10 minutes that lighter block will get them pellets going you'll hear it roaring you'll hear it and then you know it's ready to go and then I just take my cup and I start to fill up my burner and it's about 10 cups fills it up if I want I can actually pick this basket up and pour them right in now initially uh, within 20 minutes or so I've got 600, 650 degrees on this can. I mean, I've had it to where this, if I don't watch the air here, I got air control here, I'll have that burner glowing red right there. It'll actually be red. Um, and my trigger indicator thingy will show me 850, 900 degrees. I'm at 327 right now because, like I say, it's idling. It's 830 at night here, and this building's 70 degrees. I don't need all this heat. So what happens is, over the course of the day, this burn basket starts to fill with ash. And I let it do that. I let it fill up so it slows down because you don't need all the heat after the building's warmed up. It starts out about 60 in here in the morning. And within an hour and a half or so, it's 70, 72 degrees. So I just let it slow down naturally as it fills up with ash, and it works out perfect. Um, if I need a little more heat, I just take my my probe and I'll show you how it's done and I just go down in here with my probe and I give that a little poking and that's it and now I've cleaned out in doing that I've caused some of that ash to fall into this ash drawer this bottom ash drawer down in here you can see the glowing ash okay it fell through a series of holes there and uh, then uh, now that basket, now that burn basket is cleaned out a little bit and more air will flow through there. So now the temperature will come up. Uh, but I only do that really maybe three times a day is all I need to. I mean if I'm in and out of here, I do work on cars in here, so if I'm in and out of here a lot and I'm losing a lot of air to the outside, then um, I will maybe have to probe it more than three times. But uh, that's it, and um, I happen to be spiking it with a little waste oil. We generate waste oil. So I've got that dripping in there. You can see how slow it's dripping. I got about, what, one drop every second? Not even every second. I can turn it up, but it, it just falls down onto that piece of uh, angle iron down there. And it's so, it's so hot in that burn chamber, it burns everything. You don't ever see any smoke in that chimney out there. It's just, that burn chamber is so concentrated. That's the principle behind the rocket stove. That's why they're so efficient. Uh, you can look inside that burner, that burn tube, and after four years, I could take and pull that burner out of there and take a light and shine it in there, and it looks just like it's white inside. There's not any, any ash at all. There's not a, any sign of any the deposits from the oil, nothing. It's just white, clean, because it's so hot. So anyway, that's it. That's the rundown. And uh, I just uh, wanted to give you a brief a quickie on that if you have any questions. Uh, oh, I found out the burning pellets and cherry pits are the ticket. Um, I got a mixture of uh, cherry pits, which northern Michigan cherries, um, and uh, the cherry pits seem to help the pellets run down the burn tube a little quicker. If I run straight pellets, it's hotter. If I run straight cherry pits, it's not as hot. Right now, I got a mixture of about three to one. I, or, yeah, about three parts cherry pits, one part wood pellet, because it's only, you know, it's 35 degrees today. I don't need that much heat. And uh, like I say, the cherry pits actually help the wood pellets travel down the burn tube. If, I, if it's 100% wood pellets, every once in a while, 
they'll hang in this burn tube and you'll hear it rush all of a sudden. So that's uh, something if I was to do this over again, I would make that angle a little straighter uh, just for that reason. But that's it. If you have any questions, feel free. Thanks for watching.